Hi, this is Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Welcome everybody. We were going to be showing you a different video, but we had a few technical hitches. His name is Kizzy. And we were recording this being made. My lovely floppy plant pot. But unfortunately, Kizzy turned it off halfway through the process. So I will dutifully unpick and re-record at a later date. But as an interim um, video, just so that you don't go without, we're going to do a quick session on card making. The card making we're going to do will be using borders. Now, over the time, I've collected a few wallpaper borders and they are quite useful for decorating. I will bring them in one at a time and show you. I matched up several different borders with several different um, colour card bases and, and show you the versatility you can get from wallpaper borders. Um, yes, it is true that they repeat pattern, but if you're sending to different people and the distance away, then maybe you can make the same card. Just an idea. So, without me waffling on too much, I've got a card base here that has a hole in it. And then you, so it acts like a picture frame basically. So you put your picture in here to show through and then this glues down and then you have your card. So you have to be very careful with the orientation with these particular style of cards because you can end up with it being folded on the wrong direction, opening the wrong way and then being upside down. So just be aware of that. So this is the one border I paired with it. Now it has a repeat. Um, difficult to show because it's quite a long repeat. So this flower and this flower match up together. But you, in between you have one, two and then that third flower. So you can do different cards depending on the size of card you make with the different sections. Now I'm going to use this little one here which will fit in my oval beautifully and then I can do my happy birthday thank you card or whatever it's going to be and I chose this base because I think the flower the cream of the flower looks nice with the cream and the slight pinky tones on the the card. Now how I've done it is I've put my card to draw around and I have a very faint pencil line round in the oval shape and I've lined the edge of the fold against the edge of the paper so I know I'm straight. So what I want to do now is get my little cutter out so we're working with a, a smaller piece of paper. So I'm going to cut just above the flower but below this flower here so that this flower can be used. As you can see, I haven't used much of this border, but I pick them up in charity shops or if they're going cheap in the DIY shops, there's usually one or two left over end of range or whatever. So they're quite handy to have. Then I need to flatten it out and a good way of flattening out, I'm going to the edge of my desk and I'm putting it upside down against the roll and I'm pulling it along the edge of my desk the opposite way and then I'm folding it slightly and then it's not completely flat but it's a lot better than it was. Matching up the oval yet again we want to mark where we want to cut the bottom section and mark where we want to cut on the join so that it's in front of the fold both times because you don't want the picture that you're putting inside the card to affect the folding of the card. So I put a little dot here and a mark here and then that will tell me that I do a line here and then cut up here. Line up on my mark here, make sure it's level along the top 
and cut. I just cut the bit off I marked for going upwards, but that's fine. I can see where it was. So now these bits can be used for making paper flowers. So I'll put them to one side. Now the wallpaper is fraying a little bit, but that won't matter because it will be tucked inside. So now I need to get my orientation right. So the card will open up like this. So I need to make sure my flower goes down like this and that folds over. So that's how I need it to be. And I need to make sure that this picture is facing downwards, not upwards, otherwise it won't work. So in order to do that, what I want to do is actually glue round the oval and not on the paper. So I'm going all the way around the oval. And I'm using my Kalau glue in my small little pot. Now I'm not gluing right to the edge because it don't want, don't want it seeping over. And then I'm doing a little bit on the corners. It's not going to be desperately important that it, it goes down completely flat because I'll be putting the flap over it. Now I want to try and lay it down, but be aware it's right way up and it's face down. Then I want to place it and then I need to turn it over to make sure it's within the oval, the pick, the pencil line I drew and then I can press it down. Rub off the excess glue. Shouldn't have been, no there's not too much there, that's good. Then I want to turn it keeping the orientation correct and then we've got this bit here. Now this needs trimming a little bit because it's going to catch a little bit on this fold so I didn't quite trim it enough but I think it's because it's a little bit away from this edge but that's fine it doesn't matter it's not going to affect the outcome that's it so that can be trimmed so we know that all this is clear um, and we can put this flap down get the paper here that'll do I just want to make sure I don't go on to my nice mat so we can glue this down with the glue stick and then fold it over, use my barrel, now it needs a little bit extra there so I'm just going to stick some Kalau in, didn't get right to the edges and then we have a beautiful card we just need to put our greeting in and write who it's to. Right, next card, I have this lovely border, children's border, presumably, and that's the repeat. So you've got the light green tree, two elephants with the rainbow and some butterflies, the dark green tree, and back to the light green tree. So the trick is for this is first of all to try and hold it down stop it curling up and secondly to work at how much of it you can use on your card and which way you can use it because unfortunately the elephant's tail is in the way of using this section because it will be chopped off and it will be under the card this is our card base so this is our um, template if you like now if we did just the elephant's faces with the rainbow you might get away with it so we'd either have the full rainbow and low feet or feet and part of a rainbow so that wouldn't work now could we have one full elephant looks like we can a bit of its tail won't be on, but it would have to be a sideways card. The butterfly is not going to be on. So the other option, if you can't fit it on in that sort of way, is to fussy cut. So if I were to fussy cut my elephant and maybe a flower and a butterfly, we might be able to put them on the card. And because you have repeats, you may have a different size card another time. So you could maybe put it all on one card or you might 
have another project that you can use them on. So I'm going to cut round and cut down, but I'm coming round the rainbow and round the little butterfly so that I can preserve them for future projects. Let's tuck them out of the way for a minute. So that's our base. Now let's see which way it folds. So we're going to do it this way round this time. That is a spare bit of paper that can go out the way. Now, I've got to be careful not to chop his tail off. I can trim off a bit neater once I've got the excess paper. I'm cutting close, but not right on the edge. Get that weight off of it. You can come back and cut anything else off we might need of that in a minute. Now I can cut in a bit closer without having the weight. It's quite a, a fiddly one, but I think it'll be worth it. So I suppose it's akin to cutting out a picture of a picture book or something like that. You just, this is where you can get a good selection of images and you can have them repeated for future. Whereas in a picture book, it's one and done a lot of the time, unless you've got the same book over again. So this, this one would be quite a fun one for a, a little girl or little boy. Um, it's more of a kiddies card, I would say, than a, an adult one. Right, put all these bits and pieces up the end there, can we? Now, we have a little bit of issue. We need to get his trunk on, but his tail's hanging off. So I've got a solution to that. We cut the bobbly bit of the tail and re-stick it higher up. And that way, we have a tail that doesn't stick off the side of the card. Now I'm going to take that little bit of blue that's on the end of the elephant's tail and trim the white off from around the edges. So we have a little pink bobble to stick on the end of the tail. Now I'm putting him on the bottom of the card so his feet line up with the bottom of the card because then I've got room to do the happy birthday message or whatever message you're going to put on it at the top. Now he has a still a little bit of a white edge to him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my grey ink and my ink dauber if it's around here it is and just edge him just to take the whiteness away. It's got a sort of a bluey tinge this grey anyway so now just take that little bit of whiteness away, hopefully. Around the sides, around the tail. I think I'm getting more ink on my fingers than I'm on the pepper lump. And there we go. And then we glue her down. I'm using my Kalau glue because it gives me a little wiggle room and it dries quite fast. The can use a stick glue, but the stick glue could rip the tail or the trunk because when you put the pressure on the glue, it can snag sometimes. So that's why I'm being a bit more cautious with this one. But these are just making the bases with, the, or taking the plain bases and putting a picture on and you can add other things at a later date. So something to do if you get bored, just cut out some pictures and stick them on the cards and then you can add your greeting at a later date and decide what you want it to be. So we have a, pretty little elephant on the card and then you can just add your greeting at a later date. Now if you wanted to make it very childlike once you've stuck it and the glue's dried you can always go around the outside with a black pen and then that will just make it more cartoony. I might do that later if we've got time see how that goes. But that's an, another idea because I'm not sure that that grey's covered much of the white. It's covered some of the edges but not as much as I'd like it to so maybe we'll go around with a black pen. Okay so that's card number two. We've still got these bits to play with if we wanted to. We could put the butterfly up in this top corner so that's I'll keep that with that and we can come back to that if we have time and I want to get through a couple of other bits and pieces first. Okay so the next one I've got is pink and again, that's going to be opening up landscape. And I just want to make sure that my card will cover my hearts and only just so. Now to decide whether we want to cut 
and keep the border so we will cut round the whole card so there and there and there and there we can trim round here and we can bring the guillotine right okay so I'm just going on the inside of the line now my cutter is not very sharp at the moment I need to change the blade so that could be why the, the paper's fraying but there's a something we can do to get round that So we trim the edges and we can come in with a nail file and just gently brush off the fluffy bits. It just neatens the edges a little bit and I will try and I have got a, a clean a fresh blade I will change my blade when I do more cutting I do a heck of a lot of cutting on that cutting out the car bases and things like that so it's not surprising it's uh, a little bit dull right I think that's it get rid of all those bits and pieces and I'm not chucking it on the floor I actually have got a bin behind me so So we have beautiful hearts and that can just be glued on and then you can maybe stamp a greeting on this blank cart. That would look quite pretty. Excuse me. Never work with children or animals. That's what I've been told. Right, so I'm using glue stick on this one because it's a an even shape. No trunks to get rid of this time or tails. Make sure I get plenty around the edges. And get rid of my glue page. Bring this forward. Now I need to try and line it up make sure and then get my I'll get my card first I think I smooth it down to the top smooth it down smooth it down smooth it down smooth it across And you have another card. Now I'm going to quickly show you the other borders I have. I don't think I've got time this time to make cards with them, but I can just quickly show you so I've got an idea of what selection there is. So this is another one I have. So you can section it off as much as you need to so again we could make a card out of that section or that section as a nice background that section with that coming in so but this one's quite flexible actually because you can there's not actual there's pictures but it doesn't matter because it will make a good background and put a picture on top of that so that's a good background one this butterfly one you can either use the butterflies as they are so you can put your I do have another card base here somewhere excuse me put card base on and just work around it 
before you from fussy cut them and use them as ephemera and you know you've got a nice pattern repeat here and it goes to right over here somewhere so there's quite a, a nice and that's quite a, a pretty one and I say butterflies are always handy and this edging here as well you can always trim that off and use that as a border around the edge of your um, papers as well or your cards so that's quite a useful one I'm just pointing out things to look out for when you're choosing your borders um, they can be you know quite versatile and again I would use this excess um, bits that cut out for my paper flowers well, that's always a bonus for me so I've, I've trimmed this bit off and this butterfly would fit on the card but you've got bits hanging over so you'd have to um, cut it out and then stick it on so that's that one and then this one's actually a sticker so you can peel it off and no gluing involved so what you can do is you can either cut round it and use it as a sticker or literally stick where you want to on top of your card so that's another one to look out for and then it saves you glue in you might feel if it's an old one you might need to reinforce it with um, glue but you know it's quite quite handy to know whether it's a stick on one or whether it's a glue on one so that's another option you can have and off cuts of wallpaper like this one can make some fantastic backgrounds you can cut that out put it a background on you could even color if it's in black and white or whatever you can even color the flowers in and you know you you have your card it's abstract but you know some people like that um this bit here would make a lovely background and you can just put a flower on top you can maybe color that cut it out and stick it on top of that so that gives you options if you're you know trimming off a border or something um keep the the off cuts that aren't mucky with wallpaper paste or whatever and they can be useful as well so it doesn't have to be borders it can be the off cuts of the side of things as well so i think that um hopefully makes all sense to everybody so we have the three cards we've done this one i'm thinking would make a nice sympathy card so you could put under here with sympathy um that would go quite nicely and i would say this one make a nice children's card and this one maybe a valentine's card or an anniversary card or something so three very different cards from borders um wallpaper borders so there you go right well sorry this was a bit rushed and um, we will be back with the um, crochet video in due course that just remains to say and i forgot to say it earlier much love to the chosen person who today is paul and much love for all of you and i'll see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>